Hello everyone, it's Apple Mint and welcome back again to my channel. As always, I post a new video every Friday, so if you're interested in art related videos, please consider subscribing. So for today's video, I posted a poll a few days ago on my YouTube community tab and I asked what you guys would like to hear me talk about. I don't have too many of these kinds of videos where I just kind of talk about a specific topic. So yeah, I asked you guys whether you'd like to hear a story time video or um, you know, have me just talk about something art related and I decided to go with something I've been seeing a lot and things that I get asked a lot, which is how did I get into art and how did I start, how did I get to where I am now? My YouTube channel and my Instagram and everything. I'm just going to take you back to the beginning and I just want to say that a lot of people have asked me to do a draw my life and I don't think my life is that interesting. A lot of people have these crazy stories and I just, I can't relate. I don't have a very crazy life story. So yeah, I, my family, or at least my dad's side of my family is pretty artistic. My grandfather, he is a painter. He does it for fun. Um, and he paints landscapes mostly. So that's pretty different. That's pretty much the opposite of what I do because I'm so bad at backgrounds in general, but I'm trying to get better anyway. Um, he's pretty artsy and so is my aunt. She's more of the crafty type. Yeah, that's my dad's side of the family, and I, I, I want to say that's where I got this kind of artistic touch or maybe artistic interest. So when I was younger, um, I always liked to draw, like, you know, the typical stick figures on a sailboat <laughs> in poorly drawn water. Like, that was the kind of stuff that I did. I also liked to watch a bunch of TV shows when I was younger, like cartoons and things like that, and I would try to draw them. Uh, and Pokemon, I, I loved Pokemon too when I was young. Think. I was like just in elementary school when it was like out and super popular when it first started. So I was really into that. And I tried to draw a lot of things from that show. Um, and if you've seen my uh, previous video on my old artwork, you will know that my artwork was pretty terrible when I was younger. Yeah, 2007, a lot of that artwork was from. So I didn't get into anime until about that time. Um, like anime anime style if you want to count Pokemon you can but I didn't really start watching anime a lot of anime and trying to draw that style and manga style I guess you could say until yeah until I was in middle school uh, and then when I got to middle school I made a lot of friends that were in that were artsy people so that really pushed me and motivated me to draw more just because they talked about art so much and they drew so much so I wanted to also draw a lot and keep up with it like they were and so that was really fun and inspiring and I made a few like dumb really bad comics and stuff when I was a kid and you know they, now I look back at them and I think they're great because they're just so dumb um, and poorly drawn but I'm happy that I was at least trying so I always tried to do stuff like that I would you know I'd be reading a certain manga or be really into an anime like I really liked Fruits Basket when I was younger uh, in high school and in middle school and so I would try to make my own manga but you know that that was always one thing is whenever I started uh, drawing trying to draw a comic or a manga and never I never finished it I barely even started it most of the time I got through like a page or two and then it was just like too much work I was like nope I'm checking out I can't <laughs> um, so then around that same time I started getting into animating a lot of youtubers online I mean YouTube was pretty new at this time in 2005 2006 is about when it really started so uh, 2007 I'd say 2008 is when I found a few different people who animated um, you know different like they make their own anime opening and stuff that drawing in MS Paint and things like that so I wanted to make my own animation so when I was in middle school and in the beginning of high school I animated a lot um, I used like I had an old version of Photoshop that I would draw in and um, make like little anime openings and I also have those up on my channel my old animations that were pretty terrible <laughs> um, but again those were a lot of fun and I always kicked myself for never finishing what I started um, I, I finished very few animations but still it was good practice and I kind of grew out of that once I was in later high school um, and just kind of tried to practice more on my style and my coloring so in junior year was when I got my first set of, I got my Prismacolor pencils, I think, in like sophomore year of high school. 
And then like junior year of high school, I got my first set of Copic markers. So I got eight markers um, and a skin pack when I was in uh, yeah my junior year. And I didn't have a lot of variety of color, but I was so happy and I, I treated these like gold. Like literally I had a case for them and I took it everywhere with me and they were like all I used forever. I was, and, and I used them with my Prismacolor pencils. So I was just so excited to have these materials and so fortunate that I had them. And yeah, I, I used those things for a while and I continued to try to improve my artwork. And at this time I was using DeviantArt and I was really into that. Um, I, I made a DeviantArt account, I want to say back in 2011 when I was in high school. So, um, and I used it for about like five years, four or five years consistently. So um, that's Apple Mint also, you can check that out, but it's cringy. <laughs> um, but yeah, I posted a lot of my stuff there. So I didn't have an Instagram until about like a year and a half ago to two years ago. Um, so yeah, 2016 is when I made an Instagram, early 2016. I posted a lot on my DeviantArt and I kept up and I was always inspired by a lot of artists there. I find that being surrounded or immersing yourself in uh, looking at other people's artwork and um, keeping up with like just anime and TV shows and things like that helps to keep your inspiration up and motivate you. Uh, a lot of the time when I would have art block, the one thing I do is I look through other people's artwork and scroll like now I scroll down my Instagram feed, but at the time on DeviantArt, I would scroll through people's um, galleries that I, I was a watcher is what they call them on there. Uh, that was something that I always got a lot of inspiration from. And then I got to college and I consistently tried to get myself out there online continuously. Like I always tried to do commissions and stuff like that and get my artwork out there. and. I never had more than a thousand followers on DeviantArt or on my Instagram until like really recently, until this past um, year, like mid 2017, I want to say, or early 2017. Yeah, early 2017, like March last year is when I really started getting a lot of followers on my Instagram account. And that was so overwhelming to me. And I was really excited about that. I mean, a lot, I say like, you know, a few thousand, but it was more than I had ever had before because I had been online with my art since about 2011 and I had been drawing anime style since like 2007. So I'd been doing this for a long time, you know, 10 years in the making until I actually really got any like people noticing my artwork online in some fashion. So this was a big deal for me and I kept being even more motivated by this. And there were hard times. And there was times when I said, you know, nobody, like my art's terrible because constantly comparing yourself to someone else and other people's great artwork is something that kind of puts, you know, I don't know, it dampens the mood on your own art. Um, so try not to compare yourself too much because everyone's got their own rate of progression and improving. So that's what I try to, Tell myself is not to compare um, but if anything comparing does make me want to improve more so I guess there's a positive to it but anyway uh, yeah the past year I had been getting more traction eh, traction on Instagram and it wasn't until uh, I, I did have a YouTube account at this time but I was not really using it I was making a post like every three months or whatever just of a speed paint I did or whatever and I didn't really keep up with it at all I wasn't, I was really neglecting the platform and it wasn't until uh, very beginning of October, very end of September of 2017 that I posted my sketchbook tour, um, the one with the mermaid around the cover. I think it was my 2017 sketchbook tour and that one, uh, after a few weeks, started getting mm, thousands of views and then more views and that was kind of crazy because I had never had that many views and I got really excited and after this video was posted uh, and I started getting a lot of views, my follower count increased pretty quickly. And I got about, I think like 5,000 new followers in October. And this was crazy to me because I had never had this many followers on any platform. I think at this time I had about 5,000 on Instagram and it stayed at that number for months. It wasn't really going anywhere. So I felt kind of discouraged about my art. So when this happened, I immediately felt like overwhelmed by it and motivated. Uh, and I wanted to create more and I wanted to push myself. At this time I was unemployed too. I had just left the job I was at. Um, so I decided to uh, start trying to post every week on YouTube. 
Uh, and at this time I had more free time. I was not working, like I said, so I had time to post like twice a week on some weeks. But anyway, um, so I started posting and as I started posting, that first video that I had originally put out, the sketchbook tour, uh, was still getting a lot of, bringing a lot of people to my channel. So it just kind of helped grow my channel. And in December, I posted the video with um, Hatsune Miku and comparing Crayola markers to Copics. That one blew up, which, you know, completely floored me. I was just, I did not expect it at all. And come March 2018, where we are now, my channel is at about 137,000 subscribers at the time of this video. And that's crazy to me because in October I was at about a thousand and from then till now, I mean, you guys, your support has keeps motivating me as an artist. So, um, thank you so much for supporting me and enjoying my art and watching my videos and giving me feedback and comments in the, uh, in the comment section and on my Instagram. It just, it, you don't know how much it means to me. Um, you know, I, that's kind of my art journey as a, as a, as an artist, uh, I do it on the side for fun. And, um, I have been doing it for years and I've been trying to get my stuff out there for years. And that's, that's how it always is for artists, uh, wanting to get themselves out there and wanting to be noticed. Uh, it's difficult. And so don't put too much pressure for that on yourself. Um, just keep working hard, putting quality content out there, um, practicing every day and you know, you'll get somewhere with it eventually, you know what I mean? Even if it's just something on the side for fun, it, it doesn't have to be a big thing, but definitely push yourself to improve and to practice a lot um, and engage with other artists and take tips from other people. It, it's Art is a great community, the artist community. So, you know, that's, that's something that motivates me. So <laughs> I know I talked a lot and I hope I didn't talk too long. Yeah, that's a bit about how I got into art and where I am now. So I hope that uh, this video in some way inspires you or uh, you can relate to it in some way. Um, yeah, everybody starts somewhere, honestly. So just keep working hard at it and it'll become something for you, whether it's for fun or, you know, something big. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, until next week, I hope you guys all have a beautiful day. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.